and we're back so this is the third video that i'm going to produce for today in relation to lighting and shading okay and this one actually has more to do with rendering now this little window that you see here in front of us this is the um interactive uh, photorealistic view okay now i haven't really covered how to bring this up i showed one or two people in class the other day but everybody wasn't there so i'm going to just um use this video to show this now you'll, you'll notice that it is actually still rendering down the bottom left here you'll see that it's still rendering and it does it in block form normally in um you can actually set this to do it, it randomly or in a, a a circular motion but you'll see that some of it looks extremely well rendered and some of it is still very pixely and that's because it's doing it in blocks as it goes so it's just about here at the moment so what i'm going to do is um I'm going to close that it does take a while depending on on the amount of detail you have and, and the type of lighting and even the, the the shaders that you've used as regards their their uh, reflectivity and refractivity it can take a long time to render one of those uh frames that's nearly done now but i'm going to close it and i'm going to show you how we get to it from scratch okay so this actually looks quite good as it is to be working in this um view because um we're just using general kind of scene lighting but a lot of the textures are in place so it looks quite good it's only when you see the photorealistic view that you can see oh yeah that still looks a bit computery so what we do is this we go over to our um, drop down menu and we choose rendering and then we go on up to render okay and then render settings now here we go so what we're going to be using this for is we want to be able to export uh, various still frames and then eventually our animation at a particular resolution and size and we do this as you know it doesn't export video it exports a series of uh, jpeg images right so well we'll be using jpeg so ideally here uh, i just want to go through some of these settings and show you how we'll be setting them now because our animations aren't going to be very long we're okay choosing our arnold renderer now there's a few other options here and i mentioned them a few times but the one we'll be using is arnold for what we're doing it will be fine if we were producing really long videos we may not have the time to render these but the machines that we're using this year are much more sophisticated than they have been previously so we can comfortably use the arnold renderer it does take longer but it also looks a lot better but for what we're using it's okay this year previous years we wouldn't have been able to use it so let's look at some of the settings here okay we're, we're in the common tab now the arnold tab has some very specific settings here we're not going to play with these the higher these go the more realistic the scene might 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 become but it will also it, it increases the render time um massively so we're going to leave all these as they are that video that i showed you as we flew through this room these were all up around six and seven but it took something like 40 minutes to render each of the frames okay so we're not doing that we're going to leave them as they are so let's look at what we're going to do here okay so we haven't set a, a file name prefix at the moment okay we do want our file type to be jpeg we always set the quality to 100 and um, what's next that's important to us uh, we've got start frames and end frames on this right now this uh animation if i'm not mistaken is 1798 frame oh no this is the other one i cut down oh yeah it's only 261 originally the, that fly through i showed you was nearly 1800 frames it took weeks to render but i've cut this one down i, I deleted all the other rooms um so if you were making let's say an animation that had 300 frames you would put one in here and you put 300 in there now i can't put 300 in there i can only put in 261 or it'll give me back an error so what this is basically doing is it's going to if i was to set this running now it would try and render all uh, 261 frames okay uh, but we're not going to be doing that um here we would choose the camera that we want to render from now there's a number of different cameras that have been chosen the one i'm looking through at the moment if i'm not mistaken is camera one could be perspective i think it's actually perspective yeah i'm looking through the perspective camera okay so you would choose which camera it's very possible like there's another camera there let me just have a look and see which this one is there's another camera there that's actually in the scene i had at one stage about four or five cameras flying around in different directions so what i could do was i could actually um, position four or five cameras animate the four or five cameras going through the scene and what i could then do is uh, i could cut i could export all of the animations and then cut between them so uh i could basically make a little movie in, in this instance like a proper movie that had more than one take if you know what i mean but we're only going to be using the one camera for what we're doing and it will almost always be your perspective camera right um our scene setting is going to be 1920 by 1080 so the actual capture size of the screen is going to be hd 
now the resolution is set at 300 that is way too high for what we'll be doing that will probably be set at 72 it's going to be more than good enough for what we're doing the reason i did 300 was 300 was absolutely awesome but that's generally print quality and it's not required a lot of the time it just does look really really well and um, so that's most of the se most of the settings that we're going to need to adjust for this you can see it's set at uh, hd 1080 um, none of the rest of it we need to concern ourselves with that will pretty much cover everything there are no end of other settings we do not need to uh, concern ourselves with them that will be everything as it is okay so uh, that's how we, we would set up um, the render settings for our scenes I'm going to close that okay now so let's just say we wanted to have a look at that scene in photorealistic view and see what it looked like we go up to Arnold and we go to Arnold render view okay now by default um, it's not running there's two ways of running it we can choose render and run IPR or we can click play now depending on the complexity of your scene um, this could take anything up to a minute or five minutes to start showing some oh but there we go in this instance it's actually not so bad so what we can do is we can then um, uh, zoom in and out of that to show the entire image if we wish um, or we can just move in a little bit more just basically to fill out the frame so that's basically doing what it was doing when I started the video it's beginning to you can see in here it's starting to look very clear around here right so that would give us a good idea of what our scene looks like and um, now it because it is it's live I can then move that light fitting now it is going to be dodgily slow because now every time I change anything in the scene it automatically tries to remove to uh, um, re-render the scene so if I was let's say if I wanted to see how something looked with lighting in it um, in a particular way or I had two or three sets of lights and I wanted to move them around to get a particular angle I would have this open as I'm moving the lights now it does slow down your machine because it, that's constantly working trying to render the scene so what you can do is sometimes you can you can, if you want you can view it in um, a low quality mode as well if you want but I normally like working on it like this because there's no point in bringing up something that's photorealistic and low quality you may as well be looking at the other one but this does reproduce the lighting as it's uh, going to be in the scene so so that's what our scene would look like and that's how we change our render settings so if I wanted to actually export one of these scenes right uh, or export one of these images what I would do is this I'll close that down I go on up to render and then I go down to batch render and now we, normally if we had full versions of this we'd be using render sequence but we don't have a full version of it we'll render sequence if your computer was fast enough it will export your rendered frames and allow you to keep on working but we can't do that because we're using the free version so we go into batch render we click on the little box and then hopefully at some stage it's going to bring up oh there it is it's over nope okay let me just see Oh, there it is okay yeah okay so this is just about to um assuming that we've gone into render settings let me bring that back up again we go into render settings and we say that we wanted to render from frame one let's say to frame or frame one to frame five okay so that that these are basically the settings for our render this is what actually executes this so we just confirm that it's going to be the perspective camera we tell it where we want the renders to end up okay so we just choose a folder simple as that and then we go down here and we click on render sequence okay now once we click on render sequence that's us locked out of Maya it will just start um, rendering so there's not a lot we can do about that so just for the hell of it let's just say I wanted to render frame 261 um, and frame 261 so we're, we're basically just going to do frame 261 right simple as that no other frame only 261 I'm going to make a folder on our desktop. Give us a second, actually. Let's just have a look. See, let's see if I can do this on the fly in behind um, everything. Okay, so the window's up there. Okay, so I'm going to open a folder now on my desktop. You can't see this happening, but trust me, it is. And I'm going to call it uh, Maya Test Render. Okay, so I know that folder is there now. I go in here and I'm going to locate that folder. Hang on, see, I'm working with three screens. We go to our desktop and um, let's scroll down. Maya test render, there it is. So we go select. Okay, now if I choose render sequence now, what it should do is um, oh, sorry, the one other thing that you have to do is you'd normally name um, the, the default for what your frames are going to be. So 
normally speaking with something like this, I would try to leave the number at the end. So see that one there, name, comma, hashtag, or name dot extension hashtag. Um, what that basically means is if we set it, um, at rendering 200 frames, what we do is we give it a name for the very first frame. So I'm gonna call this, let's see. I'm gonna call this test, right? And we go on in and we set um, a rule in here for what it's going to be. So if it was a single frame, and we're only gonna do a single frame, it, it will gray out an awful lot of these uh, settings. But if we were going to do our full animation, let's say we can go on in here and we can set this to name.extension uh, number hashtag. And what that will do is, it, so it will call it test.jpg1, test.jpg2, test.jpg3. We'd, we'd basically set the number for it. So in that instance, what we can do is we can basically tell it what we want it to be. So we can call it 001. And it will basically just start, uh, everything after that is going to change the name of it. So um, so let me just see, sorry, pardon me. There you go. Okay, so ideally what it will do is it will call the first one test.001. And then the next one should be test uh, 002, 003, 004, which means that <coughs> we can then import them straight away into um, an, um, Premiere or whatever we wanted to do and they'll already be in the sequence numbers. So that's kind of important. But look, for the moment, all we're going to do is, um, we're just going to do a, a single frame or a single frame on this, right? So um, let me have a look, see, one second, so JPEG, that's right. Um, we don't need that. I'm gonna make sure all the rest of the settings are okay. We're all out of here. Yeah, single frame. Okay, so we're just gonna do our, our single frame, right? And the frame that we're going to choose is gonna be 261. So that's the one we're on at the moment. You can see it down here. So with a bit of luck, when I click on render sequence, it should start rendering um, that frame into the folder I've chosen. Okay, now what you can see, and it's opened up in the other window, and of course it won't let me move it now, is it's opened a render window. So let me just see, and it's starting to build it. Now I can see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and open a folder here for the desktop and we called it uh, Maya Test Render. Okay, so there it is. It's after putting the first image in there. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you because it's after opening up in my left-hand window, but I, it's, it's moving through at a fair pace. So if you hang on for a second, uh, I'll wait till it's done and then I'll show it to you. I can't move the window while it's rendering. That's one of the other drawbacks of this normally once you start a render in in um, Maya in the free version it's done whatever is happening with it you cannot touch so you can't really move the window around ideally you should be able to but it won't it, it tends to suck up all the resources so all I get is basically a spinny circle when I when I move up to the top bar and try and move it so I'm not going to be able to do that but this actually looks quite good and it's actually happening really really fast when we were doing this a couple of years ago the machines we were using were so bad this frame that I'm going to show you in a minute probably would have taken half an hour. But it's more than two towards done at the moment. So I understand this is quite boring for you because you're not looking at anything. But I am looking at the image rendering in the left hand side. So as soon as it's done, I'll be able to um, double click on this file here and show it to you. Let me just see for a second if it'll even give us. Yeah, it's not going to give us a preview until it's done. Okay. So we're nearly done there now. Oh, oh, hello. Now, that's it. Done, rendered. Isn't that nice? Okay, so let's just bring back up our folder and double click on it. And there it is, look. God knows what screen it's gonna open in now. <sighs> okay. I don't know what application it's gonna open in. It looked like it was gonna try and do it in paint or something like that. Um, but it doesn't appear to want to open it at all. Open. Yeah, sick of it. Okay, so let's see if it will open in anything else. Uh, we'll try it in paint. No, that's Photoshop. Okay, we'll know if it opens in Photoshop, that will do. Basically, all we wanna do is look at it, you know? Um, anything will do. That tends to happen when you're running Maya. Other pieces of software tend not to work. Now, I'm also recording the video at the same time, so it doesn't surprise me that, oh, hello, here we go. 
there it is okay so that's the image that it just exported so if we were running an animation through that and we had 261 frames and they'd all be of that quality it would make for an extremely nice render because that's actually done to a very very nice quality the nice shine on the desk is good now the lighting isn't very realistic it looks like the thing on the wall is the light but actually that's a clock but what's happened is the light that i've put there is so close to the the, the clock it's actually washing it out but it was only for a test but you can see how good the the quality is in a reasonably short space of time it probably took one and a half two minutes to render that image and it's nice okay so you get the idea there on how to change your settings and um, this has gone on a bit longer than i expected 15 minutes but um, you can always go back and refer to this so i hope that explains some of the settings for you and if you have any questions give me a shout